most obviously one of the most divisive subjects on the face of the earth is the subject of religion. Today I'm not going to talk about religion, but I'm going to talk about prayer. <laughs> and I know someone is trying to figure out how are you going to talk about prayer without necessarily talking about religion. It's simple. Every single one of us, those ones who believe or those ones who even do not believe, sometimes we do reach out to something that is greater or higher than ourselves. And we see whenever we are seeking help, especially when we are stuck in one thing or another. And so today, the subject matter of prayer is important. And I want you to rid yourself of any religious notions as you're listening to this podcast, because this podcast is focused on people who are visionaries, people who want to make things happen in this life. And if you want to make things happen in this life, you will not do it with only your human imagination, only your human intelligence, only your human wisdom. You will need something extra. And you will need prayer. The subject matter of today's podcast is simply this. Forget the prayer of Jabez. There is a more powerful prayer, which is the prayer of Lawrence. Uh-huh. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So you can go to your rich uncle or you can go to your girlfriend or you can go to your father or you can go to your mama and you can ask them something. Maybe you need a favor, something that is beyond your ability to accomplish at that moment in time. You ask them to help you with it. That's one way of seeking a respite for a solution, a respite for a problem, sorry. The other way, of course, is to go to the divine and you pray. What are you doing when you're praying to the divine? The same thing you're doing when you're asking your mama or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your dad or your rich uncle for help. That's the same thing. The only difference is that the parties involved are different. One party is destined to be an infinite being. The other party is seen, is known is communicated to live is experienced empirically the other party is not experienced empirically it's in the invisible realm but the same thing applies prayer prayer is a spiritual matter that is absolutely powerful that will need any visionary to use it to be able to champion their cause any visionary to use it to champion their cause so that they can succeed because in order to succeed in this life life has been structured in a very interesting way in the sense that you cannot be self-sufficient in and of yourself you cannot make it in this life and succeed in your ultimate work succeed in your purpose succeed in your calling in and of yourself you can only do a part but this world has been structured in such a way that we can interconnect we can interdepend on one another but the interdependency has its core on us being strong in and of ourselves in other words having the full measure of our own glory expended helps us to interconnect with other people and i am going way out of topic we are talking about prayer if you wanted to succeed in this life you will need to do it through prayer but over the years people have really shrouded the aspect of prayer in so much mystery to be something highly religious that only a few people can be able to ascend to the lofty annals of spirituality through prayer and then the rest of us we can actually struggle through it the truth of the matter is that one second prayer one minute prayer five minute prayer 10 minutes or 30 minutes whatever the amount or the length of prayer 
one thing is that there is a connection between someone who is seeking something and someone who is in a position to help fulfill the needs of the seeker believe me i am not in any way belittling the traditional spiritual prayer which has its own important place because it helps people to get soothed it helps people the traditional spiritual prayer it helps people to be fortified internally it helps people to communicate to the divine it helps people to get close to god and to get intimate with god in fact it does help people to hear instructions about their lives and about their mandate about their calling and their purpose from god i am not in any way belittling that what i am trying to say in this podcast is this prayer of any form if you want it to be successful it has to be number 1 as personal as possible and number 2 as clear as possible the problem we have with prayer these days is people are speaking regurgitating words that were spoken 3000 years ago and those words are basically still or those words do not necessarily mean something to that person those words are not they are religious they are they are, i don't know how to put it but these words are just some kind of facade that you're going through you are in a situation i don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've actually you've watched this uh, exorcist <laughs> i don't know if you watched that horror movie called the exorcist where there's a demon showing up and all those things i don't remember that but the only thing that makes made me laugh on that movie is this a, a, a demon shows up and then there is this preacher who is standing with a i don't know it was a 6 inch bible or a seriously huge inanimate object in form of a cross shouting mary mother of jesus pray for us i don't know what and then uh, our father who is in heaven hallowed be thy name i'm thinking are you kidding me a demon is there and you're going through some kind of rituals i'm thinking if it was up to me if it was me in that particular picture i am in danger this a problem that is just about to happen i'll be calling on god i'll not be going through some kind of template of prayer or oh, our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name no i'll be saying god help me god help me oh god help me that is the first thing that will come into my mind and by the way sometimes this happens there are those guys who normally say me am an atheist i don't believe in god and then they go into an aeroplane and the aeroplane starts moving and then this turbulence and the heat and the aeroplane just loses loses height huh for a, a split second and they're like oh god where did that come from it is a reflex thing that we have inside of us so i am communicating that prayer number one is absolutely important the aspect of having a seeker someone who wants to accomplish something or someone who needs help in a particular area in life and they want another party to help them whether it's god or whether it's another human being is the same thing but when it comes to, let's talk about god by the way when it comes to god let, in fact let's just go there because people might be thinking that i am being irreligious and people might be thinking that I'm just being too secular and too modernist that I do not want to talk about God I do not want to mention the name of God listen let me go there right there and let me just hit you straight in the face where it hurts the most because there are people who are misusing the aspect of prayer there are people who are living in this life existing in this life going through mentioning of templates Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your child is sick. Your child has high temperature in the midnight. Instead of saying, "God, I need healing for this child," you are like, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy." Are you kidding me? Let's get serious about this. And by the way, of recent, there is this movement yeah, that has been in the Christian circles where people are quoting a particular kind of scripture that is I think in the book of 2 Chronicles, where there's a guy, the book of Chronicles is an interesting Thing, just like the word chronicles mean it's a very interesting thing the, the 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 guy who wrote that scripture was basically chronicling he was remembering and for the most part sometimes there are those genealogies whoever begot this one this one begot this one big this one begot this one and so in that book there was they were going through some kind of genealogy and then they reached on a guy called Jabez 
and they stopped and they gave a three sentence description of this Jabez they saying that he was more honorable than the other guys and then he was born in a, in a in a sad environment his mother named him bitter because when he was born the mother died something like that but then he says but Jabez prayed to God and said this word that you may bless me indeed and that you might expand my territory and that you might keep my hands from evil and that it shall be well with me and then the bible records and god granted his request now guess what there arose a movement in the christian circles where people were reciting the same things that jabez said verbatim Needless to say that people have their own internal you see God put that prayer inside of Jabez in other words the way you feel strongly about something the way you need something from God is totally different from the way I need something from God you might be needing a baby probably I'm not struggling in that area you might be needing cash probably what I am needing from God is deliverance from sin from adultery from sexual sin from all those things that will be my prayer you get so i cannot start reciting lord that you might bless me indeed that you might enlarge my territory and yet my need right now my urge my need is purity my need is righteousness are you getting my point so these things of being so super spiritual being so religious and being so general in our prayers we need to make sure that we recant this we go away from it in a previous episode i believe it was episode number 1 or 3 we we were discussing about what does being blessed look like to you how does it feel like being blessed when someone tells you you are blessed when someone asks you how blessed are you what does that mean to you or when you want to call upon god and say god bless me what exactly do you have in mind it is the same spirit that i'm discussing with here today what does it mean when you are going before god to pray of what nature of what what kind of help what nature of help are you looking for and guess what let me just pause there for a minute that is the same way we appear in life this life listen it is going to be conquered we are going to be successful to the degree that we are clear about what we want and i'm just using prayer as a metaphor in this life you're going to appear and there are some things that you will want and there are some things that you will not want the answer to all these is clarity you've got to have some level of clarity on what you want especially what you want in life if you are before god assuming that really god is this tangible person just like your rich uncle that we discussed earlier if god was like your rich uncle and he is tangible you can see him you can touch him you can talk to him he can speak back to you and he has every single detail that you do need and you are before him and that's what happens on a daily basis the only difference is that we don't see him but then he is there assuming that he is there you can go to him he is loving he is respectful he he loves you he wants the best for you the only thing is that you got to ask him what you want pray tell me are you going to approach him and say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will are you going to go, go through all that man and all that verbiage are you going to go through that ritual you will be wasting a precious moment to get something that you want personally see something that resonates with you in your spirit in your heart something that you want from your for your life and why am i saying this it is because i believe with all of my heart that it is him it is god who put it in there inside of your heart in the first place he put the need for you see it is different from one person to another one person like i've said in another episode one person loves crocodiles another person loves people one person loves environment another person loves governance one person loves children another person loves to work with widows one person loves to work with businesses another one loves to work in religion they are different angles and all those people are god's people you cannot all go before god you want different things in your life. 
lives and you're saying, Our Father who art in heaven, oh my God, bless me indeed and enlarge my territories and keep my hands from evil. You cannot make that general prayer. You've got to be specific. You've got to go into your spirit and into your heart and access that where you are pained or that where you are desiring or that where you are hotly dreaming or that where you are actually really seeking to have a respite or seeking to have a some increase in there. The need is personal. You cannot generalize a personal need into a general prayer. You've got to be very specific. So forget about this prayer of Jabez where people are copying and pasting. Forget about the Lord's Prayer. Listen, the Lord's Prayer, in my understanding, it is just a template. It is not the real deal. It is a general template that you apply specifically. There's going to come a time that you need to be specific. Prayers got to be specific every working day, whether you're a believer or not. Listen to me. If you go to Bill Gates today, huh? you're not going to say, bless me. You're going to be specific on what you want. If you know Bill Gates is going to give you something, or no, let's just not say Bill Gates. Let's say anybody else who is in a position to help you. How are you going to obtain help from them? You're going to access your heart and find out what exactly you are painting, where exactly you are painting, what exactly you are in need for. That is exactly what you're going to mention. I need A, B, C, D. And by the way, we do this on a daily basis. When someone comes to me for a favor, number one, they will need to understand that I am in a position to give them a favor. Number two, they will need to have a rapport with me. Number three, if they were, they're, they're going to promise to pay back that, they will have to uh, depend on my goodwill and I have to depend on their credibility to be able to complete that transaction. It is that basic. They don't come to me and start saying some, quoting my life signatures quotes. They don't come to me starting quoting my vision to me, see, and my mission to me. And they need something for me. I hope I'm communicating. In life, if we're going to be successful with the kind of life that we want to be, if we're going to create life signatures, we need to learn to be as specific as possible. We need to learn not to be general. We need to learn to go into the specific. This life responds to specifics and people need to learn to be specific on a daily basis, even in your life. Can you get some time and just sit out? maybe one weekend or maybe one month and just nail down your specifics in life. Nail down your specifics. Actually, when it comes to the Bible, there's a very powerful scripture that says this. It says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Above all that you can ask or think. In other words, the asking and the thinking are the ones that activate the God doing. So the question is, what do you want out of this life? What kind of life do you want to live? What kind of victory do you want to have? What kind of, what kind of respite are you looking for? What answers do you want out of this life? You are not going to get those answers if you are not sitting down and being specific. People do not know what they want out of this life. And guess what? They just go back into this life of having a template where they live to pay bills and then to die and then to pass on the baton to the next generation to go through that sorry kind of a life. We have got to learn to put the brakes onto life and scratch that CD of moving in a rut and stay aside and say, wait a minute, there's got to be some kind of insight, some kind of essence, some kind of things that we are looking out for in this life before we can continue and we answer that question. What do we want? Wanting is not a bad thing. Wanting is a desire that has been put inside of us. We were created to want. We were created to desire. We were created to wish. And those things are the ones that create the kind of life, the, the kind of movement, the kind of course that we are going to take in life. You take a particular course in life because you know why you have understood what you want. Understand that first. So when you go before God and pray, metaphorically, when you're asking for something out of this world, you want something to happen in your life, maybe in your finances. In how much finances are you talking about? In your relationships, what kind of relationship are you talking about? In your business, what kind of business? How, how big, how expensive is the business? How much returns per month or per year, per whatever, per quarter? How many employees? How, what is the culture of that business and so on? Is sit down and clarify 
verify these mighty things in your life first. Get clarity. Be clear on what you want before you can start praying. Let me be personal a bit and just share with you some of the things that are deeply entrenched inside of my spirit. If God was there, and this is what I normally pray on, on a daily basis, on an occasional basis, when a push comes to shove and I'm in this mode where I feel like God can answer just about anything I ask, the question is what are you going to ask for? That is the catch. If, if, if God is here, like I shared earlier, if God is where you can see him, hear him, he sees you, you see him, he's loving, he's, he's generous, he has everything that you do need. The only thing is that he gives to the degree of your heart's desire, the degree of your asking. What are you going to ask him for? Are you going to ask him for another wife? Are you going to ask him for, what are you going to ask him for? See, there is no right or wrong answer to that. The only answer that is correct is the personal answer. As in, me, I would want something different from what you would want. The question is, have we, the two of us, clarified what we do want? Oh God, that I may be so deeply in love with you and live daily in your presence and maintain our intimacy. That's one of the things that I normally ask from God. Number two, Oh God, that I may impact lives of millions through coaching, through speaking, through preaching, through seminars, through workshops, through radio, through TV, online, and speak hope to the hopeless and challenge millions to take action for their lives and own live rewards and have legacies on the face of the earth. And then I go before God and say, Oh God, that I may own my own home, that I may raise my own family and be blessed seeing my grandkids and seeing the mighty in the land with a godly lineage in this universe impacting the six continents, the seven continents of the world. And then I say, Oh God, that I will be extremely wealthy and prosperous and a blessing to my fourth and fifth generations for me. That is the prayer of Lawrence. It is for me. It comes from my heart. It comes from my spirit. I do not copy and paste prayers. I access my spirit. I access my desires. I access my heart. And I ask best on what's in there. I don't pray just for the sake of praying the Lord's prayer. The prayer of Jabez. I don't know reciting the grace. What, are, what is the use of those things? What is the use of reciting the grace? What is the use of reciting the Lord's Prayer when your child is sick at midnight? What is the use when you need $140 million for you to finish a business contract? What is the need of the Lord's Prayer there? What is the need of the, the, the Jabez's Prayer there? The specific thing is that you need $140 million at this moment in time. So go before God and, and, and say, place it there, be clear. I need $140 million. And this is what you people normally do on a daily basis. Some of you, you go to the bank. What do you do? You pray to the bank to give you X amount of money to help you in an X amount of business and so on. And bail you out one way or another. But let's just step aside for a little, a little bit, for one minute, and ask ourselves, what if we were this, this disciplined? What if we were this concerted about clarifying what we want out of this life and really got the answers of what we wanted and ordered our lives around about those? How about that? How about that? It has got to be personal. I pray, I pray that you will come to clarify and you'll have your own kind of prayer. There was this, the Lord's Prayer that I've talked about. And then there's this Jabez's Prayer that I've also talked about. But I've also talked about Lawrence's Prayer. There's got to come a point that there's a prayer for Julie. There's a prayer for, there's a prayer for Samuel. There's a prayer for Dorcas. There's a prayer for Aisha and so on and so forth. As in every single human being that exists on the face of the earth, you need to have it personal. You need to clarify what in the world you want out of the world. There is nothing wrong with that. It is not being selfish. It is just being clear. These people who normally go around thinking that when you're asking for things, you're being selfish. They're, they're shrouding the whole of life. 
and you go around life not knowing what you really want out of it. I think I've just worked myself hard on this one. But my point is simple. Listen. Be clear about what you want out of this life. That's just about it. Thank you for listening. Until next time, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.